The regular council meeting of the village of Armada will now come to order. Uh, will everyone rise for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank Next is for approval of the agenda. What's the council's wishes to Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we would approve the uh, agenda as presented. Support. Moved and supported. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Next in is the citizen comments. Have three minutes and state your name for the record, please. Anyone like to address the council at this time? Well, we have none. So uh, tonight there is no presentations, and we're going to move to administrative reports. F and V is here, and also Mr. Clark's department, the uh, sewer department. Uh, okay. Mr. Clark first. Oh, sure. So Scott is here. I'll turn it over to him to get the report. The November 2018 discharge monitoring report has been submitted to the MDQ. The wastewater plant was in compliance with all MPDS permit limits for the month of November 2018. The average flow for this month was 140,000 gallons per day. The maximum flow for a single day was 210,000 gallons. Um, this part we've discussed in the last few meetings, but we'll go over it because we actually supplied a memo now that kind of clarifies it a little more. The arsenic concentrations in the biosolids that was collected on August 29th was 70.3 milligrams per kilogram. We have submitted a memo to Steve Clark and now in this report it's located in Appendix G. And basically what it explains is we just would need to replace the yard hydrant to try to get that last residual sludge out of those tanks because the mixers aren't very effective and they you actually have to shut them off after you get so low because they burn up. So um, possible way of that is with the yard hydrant and then also I was thinking if I get with Ed a little cheap option might be able to run it from the main hydrant with enough hose and a backflow preventer and a meter. So it's another option we might want to think about. The following items will need to be addressed in the near future. The emergency eyewash and the shower that is located in the laboratory will need to be replaced. IOSHA requires that the tempered water be supplied to the eyewash and shower units, so there may be additional plumbing costs associated with installation of a new valve. And, um, Have we got any bids on that? No, that's another thing I can get a quote on yet. I did find the print for the company that does it, so I can, I can get that out. Um, the Colonial Lift Station hatch, as we've discussed, is uh, beyond repair and useful lifespan. Uh, both of those quotes are in Appendix F. Uh, I spoke with Eifert today. He actually called and was wondering what the status was. I asked him if we would be able to extend it to the spring. He wasn't extremely thrilled about that. He said, kind of. He would have to adjust maybe if the, the um, materials. Is, so labor should be the same materials. Possibly will go up. So, And I will get with Jet tomorrow. I'm gonna contact them to see what they say about possibly extending their quotes. Uh, due to the recent electrical issues that we've had <coughs> caused equipment failures and alarms, the following have been recommended. Install a new 120 volt power supply for the PLC, motor starter contacts, and other equipment that are controlled on this voltage. Inspect electrical wiring equipment at the plant. This should include checking ground connections, proper bonding and loose connections. Inspection of each transformer and control panel due to performance issues and the overall age of this equipment. Maintenance and general housekeeping were completed in accordance with O&M manual recommendations. Completed work orders are included in Appendix D. It was noted in May of 2018 by Buyer Instrumentation that the effluent flow meter is on its last contact. We recommend having this replaced as soon as possible. <coughs> Proposals for that from Buyer and UIS to replace the flow meter are in Appendix E. On November 2nd, NMET came to the facility to service and troubleshoot the gas sensors in the screen building. 
They had been displaying inaccurate readings and causing alarms. The hydrogen sulfide sensor was removed for repair on November 14th and it returned with the hydrogen repaired hydrogen sulfide sensor and calibrated and fixed the oxygen sensor. On November 9th, Watson Bros was on site to complete the annual preventive maintenance on the makeup area unit for the screen building. The technician stated that the amplifier for the gas modulating valve was malfunctioning and that he was going to order a new one. He returned on the 28th and then replaced the amplifier. The unit's been working a lot better since then. Um, we had to reset it like every other day there for a while, so, but since then it's been actually running good and has heat, so that's good. On November 19th, Tony's HVAC was called to inspect the boiler system. The lab temperatures had dropped over a period of a few days and did not appear to respond to the thermostat. Tony's HVAC found that an actuator slash valve on the air handler was not working properly. The technician stated that he didn't have a part on hand and would come back at a later date. FEOP requested a full quote on parts and labor. On November 28th, the meddler analytical balance was calibrated by QA services. On November 2nd, FEOP collected F1 mercury samples in accordance with the pollution minimization plan for mercury. FEOP was required to do additional sampling per the PMP since the sample on the 2nd was higher than the 1.3 nanograms per liter outlined in the plan. The additional sampling took place on the 19th and 20th. The sampling included the influent and the monitoring points throughout the village, so we went around and popped a couple manholes. On November 5th, FEOP and Steve Clark conducted a site visit at the potential source point discharge locations, which are the dentist office, complete a basic inspection and request maintenance and recycling records. And then we had two emergency calls for the month. On November 3rd, FEOP received a zone two alarm. Upon arrival, we found that the oxygen meter in the screen building had dropped below the minimum percentage of 19.5. FEOP's handheld was reading 20.9%, so that kind of spawned this whole thing with MED of them calibrating these and fixing them. On November 18th, FEOP received a zone two alarm at 5.20 a.m. Upon arrival, found that there was an active screen alarm in the building, but all the sensors were reading correctly. So I don't know if they dropped down and then it called out, and by the time we got there, it came back up. So. Mm -hmm. Um, he did say after he calibrated the, the oxygen takes a few days to kind of stabilize, which it seems to have done because we haven't gotten any more. So and that's all I got. You guys got any questions for me? Yeah, I got one. This uh, outlier instrument company? Yes. Uh, uh, what happens if this uh, semi converter fails? I mean, what if we're on our last deal? What do we get? Uh, it's pretty. It's kind of a big deal because it's the, the totalized flow going out of the plant. We can kind of, historically in the plant, they've used the influent for it too, so we would still have a meter, but ideally you want that one working correctly. So yeah, it, it's kind of a major piece of equipment. Do you want, do you want to get that? It's only three grams. I don't know if it's, uh, is it outside the SRF? That I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know that. You want to check that yeah. first because, because if they're going to replace it with that, then yeah, you guys might yeah. be able to hold out till then. I could uh, you contact Chris about that. I'm not okay. Sure that, yeah. I would assume that might be in the scope of that. I would. I would, yeah, I would think hope, so. Yeah. yeah. I would. I would hope too. Okay. So, uh, well, we'll we'll check okay, into that. Because yeah. yeah, if it is, we probably can hold out. And like I said, they have historically reported some of the flows off of the influent anyway. So, but yeah, it is it is important for sure. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Have a nice holiday. You too. Thank you. Yes. That's it then, Steve? Yeah, that's it uh, for okay. us. Um, you have your treasurer's Thanks, report incorporated. And liaison reports on <coughs> general business. The consent agenda approval of the regular, regular council meeting minutes of uh, December 10th. Not 17th, so 10th. It's just 10th on here. Right here, though, on my on my sheet, it says the 17th, so that's fine. Oh, I'm sorry, you're not mine. Yep, yep. And the payment of bills, what's the council's wishes? President, I'll move the consent agenda be accepted as presented. Support. Moved and supported. Any further discussion? 
If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Old business. Next is the sewer plan update. Anything further? Nothing else to add that Scott hasn't already talked about. Very good. Thank you. West Main Street, Mr. Ballard, your department, please. As, our, as of our last meeting, we were, we were in seasonal shutdown. They will come back when the uh, uh, weather breaks, when that is, is up to God, I guess. And uh, we'll go from there. Uh, other than that, the uh, road seems to be smoothing out as well before, because I went out through there a couple times. So uh, I guess we're <coughs> waiting until the weather breaks. Right. That's. <coughs> yeah. What's about uh, a good three months? March. We might be able to start March. March you said. Yeah. March. Yeah. March. Yeah. The weather's good. Yeah. Uh, no new business. Up and coming agenda items. Any? Well, we'll probably, we have a um, letter of interest to the ZBA. Um, um, I believe we have a letter of interest for council. Only one. We. Um, but those are open till the end of the month, so we're you know we're waiting to see if anybody else puts in a letter. Um, Do they have to be in by the end of the month? Yes. The yeah, we, we put an end date on it just so. I mean, if we wouldn't have got any, obviously we would have had to extend it. But we do have one. Okay. Um, and I, I think that's it for me. You had some stuff though. Uh, well, I think you mentioned it. Uh, I'll just give a CBA update at the next meeting. Good. It's just Thank with you. the uh, with the uh, Let's see. Floors open up to citizen comments again. <laughs> None. Please zoom over to Nancy. No. <laughs> uh, council comments. Any comments? I've, I've got one. Uh, I was up at the library. I had a citizen come up to me and ask me if I drove to the library. I said yes. She says on that road right out there. I go yes. She says, do you like the conditions of that road? I go no. <laughs> None of us on council like that. We know we've got a lot of roads. She just wanted to vent her frustration that there's still roads to be done, even though we've got another project that we are working on. So I said I will. I will mention it. So uh, we have stated that in uh, as soon as we can get some more money, somehow, uh, whether it's Act 51 money, of course, you know our taxes are pretty well set there. So, but as soon as we can, we. Mr. Ballard has already addressed that. Well, issue. and one other aspect of the road thing too is the pipes underground. We sure. don't want to be putting new roads over 80 and 100 year old pipes. So <coughs> it's not just money for the road; it's money for the underground. Did you explain that to us, Steve? Yeah. Well, the infrastructure is very important. So, okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, any community events at this time can be addressed? Um, Santa comes uh, this weekend, Saturday. Yeah, Bison, the hay rides, okay. it's a fun All right. I'm not sure what the time is. So. <clears throat> uh, you know what, I don't know for sure. I believe it's 1. 12, 30, 1 o'clock. Yeah. I don't one know what time, time you load the wagons, though. But I'm sure if you find a lion, they can tell you. Now, we don't have a closed session tonight. And uh, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment, please. Mr. President? I would like to wish all of our constituents and our residents a very Merry Christmas and a happy holiday season. With that being said, the time is 7.14 and I will so move to adjourn. Second. Moved and so second. Was that you, Mike? Yeah. yeah. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor. Aye. 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 Motion carried. Merry Christmas. So Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas to everybody. And to all of you.